Welcome back to the Crochet Credits. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we have a Tunisian lace poncho using a Tunisian afghan hook that we have. You'll need a longer one of these extensions in order to get all the stitches on and then once we get started you'll see that it will condense into half. So what you're looking at when you look at the model here she's actually just wearing a rectangular panel and we're gonna make that rectangular panel and then we're going to whip stitch it up along the back. So the seam is actually on her back that you cannot see here in the photograph. You will also notice that the stitches look like they're kind of rotating a bit. They're kind of shifting. That's a natural thing when it comes to a Tunisian that will happen. So what's gonna happen is that once you get all the way and uh, all the way around you're just going to whip stitches so that you have a panel. So I was thinking to my point of view what really kind of um, really kind of scared me a little bit is that it looks like there's contouring. That's just a Tunisian just wrapping naturally around her body. So it's one of those ideas where it's just literally a rectangle and we're gonna finish off the top and the bottom. So we're just gonna work on just a very small sample today but you can see all the different sizes. So small and medium is chaining 164 and then we have large to extra large is chaining 184 and then two extra large then is in uh, 196. So I'm just gonna do a small sample. If you'd like to do a small small samples who or even for a child size you just have to chain in multiples of two in order to make it work. It's also recommending that we have here Red Heart Soft. Just for um, full tutorial reasons I'm gonna be using Bernat Chunky. That's why my hook is a little bit bigger is an eight millimeter size L and then you'll need also a regular size hook that matches as well. So um, you'll need a six millimeter size J crochet hook and I'm going to be using a eight millimeter um, size L when I do the finishing for this particular one as well. So it's really an easy pattern but I'm gonna show you how to get started and maybe you can learn some Tunisian while you're at it. So this here is a Tunisian hook. This is actually Knitter's Pride and uh, what's gonna happen is that we're just going to use the hook in order to just gain our stitches and then the leftover loops are gonna stay onto the flexible wire here. The longer the wire the more stitches can fit on. This would not actually fit, uh, fit all of the particular ones so I would just need a longer extension which I have in my collection. And then you have a stopper at the end to prevent the stitches from falling off the other side. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna get ourselves started so you can learn the basics of Tunisian right now and I will show you how to get started. So Tunisian is a cross of knitting and crochet at the same time. So let's just create a slip knot to begin. So we're gonna, it's basically kind of crochet but it looks really quite awesome but it has that knitting property to it. So create a slip knot and insert your afghan hook, that's what it's called, into the slip knot. So what I need you to do, you can either chain 164, 184, 196 depending on the size you wanna do or you can just chain a multiples of two and you can uh, just change anything you wish. So I'm gonna do that. So you're just gonna chain, so I'm going to say that I'm gonna chain 16. That's an even number, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and, and 16. So the thing about Tunisian is that I just chained uh, uh, 16 uh, chains. So when I go to do my first row across it's gonna be exactly 16. So it's not like typical crochet where you go second chain from the hook and you lose a chain. Uh, in this case you keep the same number. So let's go across and I'll show you how to do a forward pass. And in this case it's called forward half. So what I need you to do to do the first forward half or the forward pass, turn it over and go second chain from the loop, uh, from the hook. And what I want you to do is insert into the back um, um, part of the stitch and yarning over and pulling it through and slide it down the shaft to get the right uh, distance. So then go into the next one. So in the back, yarn over, pull through and slide to the shaft. And you're gonna do that all the way across like so. Pretty easy, right? So what you're doing is you're leaving them onto, onto the afghan hook. So the thing about Tunisian is that it's a cross of knitting and crochet because in crochet what happens when you create a stitch you close the stitch by finishing it. In this case you're creating the stitch but you're not closing it on the first pass. You're closing it on the second and we'll get to that in just a moment. So you're just gonna work your way all the way across and just put me on hold and we're gonna just then finish off. So put me on hold if you have a longer chain right now. So continue to slide it all the way down the, the wire as, it, as you need the space on your hook and you're gonna go right to the very end. And then you're gonna start 
then the return half or the return pass just like this. Okay, so you should be able to count 16 on here if you're doing a sample. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I counted in groups of 2. So there is 16 stitches. So the return pass or the return half is, is gonna be the same in this particular uh, row but it's gonna change as we move up because the poncho is done slightly different. So to do the return pass you're gonna yarn over and pass and pull through one loop only. That is considered your chain one. So normally when we start in crochet we start on this side and we chain one and then we go. In this case we return uh, when the return pass is when we chain one in order to build up another row. So once we've just done that we're gonna yarn over and pull through two and you're gonna do that all the way back now. So yarn over, pull through two and keep doing that. So you can see the extension cord is kind of moving around underneath. If it was on my lap it would just be resting on my lap. And I'm going all the way back until you end up with just one loop back on the hook. So essentially you've just closed the stitches. So that's what makes it kind of crochet right. So knitting keep, kept it open for the first half and we closed it in the second. So you will notice that you will have these gapping spaces and that naturally happens. So when you finish off a project you have to finish off in the forward pass in order to fill that gapping space in. But now we're going to start the pattern as written. So if you wanna learn more about Tunisian we have the basics of your simple stitch and all that jazz here on our YouTube channels. So if you'd like to try that you can but I'm gonna move on for how this Tunisian lace poncho is done. To do this poncho you're going to start off not typically like you would if it was a regular Tunisian project. So normally what you would do is that you come in and you slide behind the vertical bar like so and then you pick up the yarn and you pull it up like that. That's how you would normally start. In this case because there it's almost like a moss stitch they want you to keep an extra space in there. They want you to chain first. So chain first which we don't typically do but you need to do it and then come into the very first one. So it's telling you to skip over this one and go right to this net one here. And it's telling you to go into the vertical bar. So just going in the side and yarning over picking it up. But you're not done. Normally you would move to the next one. They want you to yarn over and pull through that loop one more time. And that is considered a chain one. You're going to skip the next vertical bar you see and go to the next one right here. So just going into the side of the bar, pulling it through, but you're not done. You need to chain one to finish it. And what you're doing is you're skipping every other vertical bar to create a space. So we just skip the next bar, go to the next space, pull through, and then pull through that loop to finish it. Skip the next bar, so in, pull through, pull through the loop to finish. Skip. So you will notice in the instructions it said that you had like a massive amount of loops the first pass. This here is gonna knock those loops into half because you're only doing every other one. And you just keep sliding them down the afghan hook as you need the space. And eventually you're gonna come to the very end and you gotta watch how this is done. So you're gonna skip the second last one. So what you need to do is just turn it towards you and just slide it in as if it looks like a regular stitch. And then yarn over pulling it through like that and chain one. So it looks like it's the same. Now we're gonna come back in the other direction to come back in the other direction the, the return half or the return pass yarn over pull through one and then the next two come together. So yarn over pull through two. Yarn over pull through one. The next one yarn over pull through two. So if you can remember one and then two. One and two and one and two. And you're going all the way back. So one and two and one and two and one and two. 
now you just created a gapping space that will be filled in as you do the forward pass. So let's uh, do that now and let me show you how to fit, do, do that and it will change the look of that right now. So let's do a forward pass. So you no longer have to skip the ones that was only the first time we had to do that. So now we're only gonna play in the vertical bars that are left for the remaining of the whole thing. So to start the next row is just like you did before. So yarn over, pull through one which is not typical but we have to do it this time and then slide in the next vertical bar yarn over, pull through and then you want to yarn over and chain one in the same bar. So next bar, pull through and then chain one. Next bar, pull through, chain one. Next bar, pull through, chain one and you're gonna do that all the way across. The trick is, is the very end of your row. So the very end of the row you have to go in. So you don't ever, there's no vertical bar so you don't see that. So what you have to just do is go in and it looks like a regular stitch. So if you get rid of the other stuff here that you can't see it looks like a regular stitch. Pull through and then chain one. And now let's return, do a return pass. So to do a return pass pull, pull through only one and then yarn over pull through two and then one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two one two one two one and then two. See? So do you see how that finished it off? See the chains are right in the center. So let's do one more just to make sure you got it. So chain one to start and then in the vertical pull through and then chain one. See how it looks different? So if you go in right and pull through if, like a regular simple stitch see how it looks different and then chain one to finish it. And then in I'm gonna speed up a little bit. It's actually a really fast pattern. I can see an afghan made with this. Especially in the chunky yarn like this. And then don't forget the outside here. Just turn it and then go into what appears to be a stitch. Pull through. Chain one. And then come back. So chain one and then two and then one and two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One and two. See that? Not awesome. So eventually you're gonna get to the size that you want to get to and it says that um, it tells you that you need to go to a certain amount of, of rows. So it says to do uh, either 30 rows which includes the forward pass in the back and coming back that's one. So in this case it's going forward and then when I return back that's considered one row done. So you're either gonna do 30 rows, 31 rows or 32 depending on your size and then it says to bind off. So let me show you how to bind off. To bind off and finish you have to go in the forward pass. See how this big gap is there? So in order to bind off we're gonna start just like we normally would. So you're gonna go right into the chain space here. You're just gonna go into one of the vertical strands and yarning over it, pulling it through and through. Give it a bit of slack. Don't be too tight. Then you're going to go in the next one, the vertical, pull through and through. And now the space going in, pull through. So it's like typical knitting, vertical, pull through and through. And then the space and you're gonna go all the way back across doing this. This is called the bind off and this will finish your project over. And then what we need to do is that you need to leave a long enough tail at the very end so that you can use a tapestry needle to seal the deal in order to have it to be a completely round poncho. Ok, 
Okay, there's a space, don't forget, and then the very end, and in the very end, you wanna treat it like it was a regular stitch. Pull through and through. And now you've just bound off, and when you look at all the rows, you can see all the rows are filled in. So leave an extra long tail here on this side, and to go all the way down your project, so that you can whip stitch that together, and we'll do that right now. So now that I've cut my strand, I'm just going to just pull it through the final loop to lock, and what I wanna do is that I wanna do a whip stitch. So you'll need to grab a tapestry needle in order to do that. So using the long tail, you want to turn this thing so that it's going to be a complete circle. So when you fold this, you wanna fold it so that the good side here is on the inside, just like this. And this will let the seam line that we're about to create stay on the inside of the poncho. You simply, you're just going to match the stitches across from each other across and then just match them up. And so this will put the seam line on the inside. So just matching and match. And you're gonna go all the way down the seam line doing this. When I go to fasten off, I wanna make sure that I'm getting both of the edges in. Okay, and then I wanna just tie it. Tie it to lock. Like so, and then just weave in the ends on the inside. So just passing through. Try not to go to the other side of the project so that you can't see it on the other side. So back and forth three times. And when you turn this inside out, you should not be able to see that. What I would do also, any of the starting strand, I would get rid of that as well. And so that you're completely clean of that. So take that and do the same thing. So just in and out three times and lock it into place. So now that I did that, I'm just gonna fold it so the good side's facing out. So you can see this is what it looks like. And uh, have you, can you tell which side is up and what side's down at this point? It's almost hard to tell, right? It looks even on both sides because of the way that we did it. So what's gonna happen now is that we're going to apply the top border and we're gonna switch back to a regular crochet hook if you would like to. You could actually even just use your um, Tunisian hook also because it's pretty much almost the same size if you wish. So use the hook that you think is more popular and what we want to do in this particular case is that we want to um, do the top one and then we're going to do then, um, we're going to do then the bottom. To do the top border, you just grab the same yarn and we're going to start, I would probably start at a seam line just to keep it e even for you. And what you want to do is that you want to just going in and it helps just define it better uh, by going all the way around is that you just wanna uh, just join it with a slip stitch and chain one just like that. And what you need to do is that you need to go all the way around. So that was a regular stitch. So you can go and just put in one single crochet into every stitch around. If you have big excessive gaps, which I don't, um, you can go right into a gapping space and all you're just doing is just doing a final kind of revolution around in order to do the top of this. So just once you get back to the start, just slip stitch it to the very beginning and then fasten off that yarn and then the top would be then done. So let's then move on and do the bottom. To do the bottom, we just turn this upside down. So I just finished the top here. So let's turn it upside down, start at the thing. So it's really kind of interesting. Um, I haven't seen anything like this one before. So you'll notice that the way that I had you do it is that there's regular stitches and if you go into the front loop, the first one closest to you, that's a front loop and the other one's a back loop. So when we go to start this one here, we want to join the yarn near the seam line on the front loop. So just grab in the one loop only and then it says to chain three. So one, two, three. And I want you then to half double crochet in the same front loop. Just like that. Now what's interesting and why I say it's interesting, you're gonna skip the next stitch and go in the back loop and you're going to half double crochet. First, chain one and then half double crochet in the back, in the same back loop. Now you're gonna skip the next stitch and now come to the front loop. So half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the front loop. So it's telling you to play within different um, loops. So then skip the next stitch, go into the back loop. 
So this is called a V stitch. So they made up of half double crochets and chain ones. So that was the back. Skip the next one, come to the front. And you're gonna do that all the way around for round number one and this is doing the bottom. So it's gonna make it flare out a little bit which you see the model is flaring out at the bottom. So skip the next one, go to the back. Okay, skip the next one, go to the back, uh, front this time. Skip the next one, go to, and go to the back. So because you worked in sets of twos is that when you come all the way around you are in the back one because you started off in the front one and then just join it with the slip stitch to the uh, chain three or sorry to the second chain up and then therefore that will conclude round number one. So let's move on to round number two. So we're now going to slip stitch to the next available. So this is a chain one space. You're gonna just only go into the front loop. I've never seen anything like this one. So you're gonna come to the front loop only of that chain and just slip stitch. And now you're gonna create a V stitch. So you're gonna chain three which is the first one and V stitch or sorry half double crochet in the same one. The same front loop. Now you're just going to go to the next V stitch and it's a chain one and you're gonna go to the back loop. So you're just gonna go into the back loop of that chain one space. Chain one and so you, that's where you're gonna apply the V stitch. Then come to the next V stitch and you're gonna come to the front loop. Kinda neat right? It's neat how designers have different thoughts. And then skip one, go to the back loop for the next. So you're gonna do that all the way around for this and I will see at the end of round number two. So once you get all the way around you're on the back loop here of this chain one space and then just join it then to the chain of uh, the second chain up. Okay so you've just now maintained that. So now we're gonna do the final round here and we're gonna slip stitch the front loop of the next chain, chain one space. So just go there front loop only slip and now what we want to do is chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and it says slip stitch to the third chain of the hook. So one, two, and three. We're gonna slip stitch to the third chain, pull through. This is called a pico and you're gonna do a half double crochet in the same loop as the join. So part of the chaining of five was considered some of the half double crochet to start with. So now you're gonna come to the next one and it will be the back loop of the chain one space. So what you wanna do is you wanna start off with a half double crochet and then chain three. So one, two, three. You chained five here because it was a start. Now you're just gonna, once you've done your three, it's the third chain, come back and then half double crochet in the same back loop. Okay, so the next one's the front. So you start with the front loop in the chain one space, chain three, so one, two, three, slip stitch to the third chain down and then finish that one with a half double crochet in the same loop. So the next one is in the back. So half double crochet, chain three, slip stitch and half double crochet. And you're gonna do that all the way around and that actually concludes this whole idea. Isn't that neat? So I know it's a very small sample. It's almost like a wrister at this point. So I wanna, let me finish this and then we'll just do a quick recap and then be done for today. So I'm just coming around to the very last one here and then I'm just going to join it to the second chain up to complete. So what you wanna do at this point, you see how it naturally flared out? That's what happens in the model. And you're just gonna cut the yarn and you're just gonna weave it in like going back and forth like you would. So that would be considered the bottom. This would be considered the top. And what you can just do is that with the crochet hook you can just chain either 70 or 80 or 90 inches and then what you can just do is then just feed it through the the actual seam line of the of the project right here. Okay so you're just gonna go um, just feed it on through and therefore it will give it some um, tension at the top if you wish there to be tension. So you just chain that and then just feed it in amongst the stitches. You could actually even better 
that you can use the gapping spaces where the Tunisian actually starts up as well and therefore this would be good to go. So it's a really nice easy pattern to be able to work with. It is intermediate level because it is a step beyond the regular Tunisian but overall it's a great project to be able to do. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. This was my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Mm -hmm.